Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thursday, the 18th of March, 2021, is the fourth week in Lent and is the Feast of St. Cyril of Jerusalem. Our Daily Prayer Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I may listen to your word attentively and obey it joyfully. Amen. Our Daily Scripture from the Magnificat But first, an overview. The pathetic fact about pride is that it moves us to replace God, the infinite God, for whom we are made, with finite goods that cannot possibly fulfill us. The Israelites adored a molten image and exchanged their glory, the glory that comes from being graced by God, for the image of a grass-eating bullock. We, the New Jerusalem, are often tempted to fashion our own idols, because somewhere deep down we do not want to come to Him to have life. But we have only to cry, Remember us, O Lord, and He will come and save His chosen people. Relent in punishing your people. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is our God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So, the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God Psalm 106 Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image they exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Verse before the Gospel God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. 
In our gospel today, we hear that one who will accuse you is Moses, in him you have placed your hope. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 5, verse 31. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true, but there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this, so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice, nor seen his form. And you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet, if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. But how can you believe, when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled, Coming to Him to Have Life. You have come into the nets of the church. Be caught. Stop fleeing. For it is not Jesus catching you, not that you might die, but that in dying you might be made alive. For it is necessary for you to die and to rise. For you have heard the apostles say, dead to sin but living to righteousness. Die then to sins and live to righteousness. From today on live. See with me the great dignity Jesus gives to you. You were called a catechumen, one who hears only externally, hearing hope but not knowing it, hearing mysteries but not understanding hearing the scriptures, but not knowing their depth. But now you hear internally, not externally. For the indwelling spirit makes your mind into a divine house. When you hear what has been written concerning the mysteries, then you understand what you did not know. And do not think that what you receive is a little thing, You, being a pitiable person, are receiving the name of God. Hear Paul saying, God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1.9 Hear another writing saying, God is faithful and just. 1 John 1.9 Foreseeing this, that is, that people were to receive the name of God, the psalmist spoke in the person of God, saying, I have said, You are all gods and children of the Most High. Psalm 82, 
6. But see that with the name of faithful you do not have an unfaithful intention. Having entered the race, walk the walk. You do not have another opportunity such as this. If the days of your wedding were coming, would you not regard all other things lightly and become focused on preparation for the feast? From today on, abstain from every evil thing. Let your tongue not speak insignificant words, nor let your sight look at sin, nor let your mind wander toward what is not profitable. This was written by Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, who died in 386 and was Bishop of Jerusalem was expelled three times from his see by heretics who opposed his unfailing orthodoxy. Daily Bible Verse from the Laudate entitled The Feast of the Master Catechist St. Cyril of Jerusalem Quote But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a strong hand? Unquote. Exodus 32:11. Yes, St. Cyril was the Archbishop of Jerusalem when the Arian heresy disturbed the peace of the church all over the Roman Empire. Cyril vigorously defended the unchangeable teachings of the church. For this he suffered multiple exiles from the Sea of Jerusalem. St. Cyril is recognized in history by his catechetical works. He prepared multitudes of catechumens to receive baptism and help the neophytes after Easter to grow in the faith. What is really providential in the work and legacy of San Cirillo is that he documented his teachings which have come to us. His writings of over 1600 years ago prove that the Catholic Church is the same in teachings and beliefs in late 300s as she is today. Nothing has changed. Our key scripture for today presents us with one of the most important subjects in religion. At the very heart of religion is intercession. Intercession means standing in the gap for an offender and pleading that his sins or crimes be forgiven or that the offender be given a reduced sentence. Intercession or mediation is the most important task of priests. Jesus Christ, our eternal High Priest, is our chief intercessor. In the first reading, we see Moses as the intercessor. Quote, Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self. Unquote. Exodus 32:13. Moses reminds God. Abraham, Jacob, David, Daniel, and all the prophets were all intercessors. When you pray for your spouse and children, you are an intercessor. At that moment, you are a priest in the family. What is the best outcome of the prayer of intercession? Quote, so the Lord changed his mind about the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. Unquote. Exodus 32:14. Prayer moves God. Anchor your prayer of intercession on the promises of God. Where do you find these promises? In the Bible. God's promises are our armor and protection. Psalm 91, 4
Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings with Lenten Bonus Introductory Prayer Jesus, the gift of faith, permits me to soar higher. I believe in you. I lend myself to this intricate duty of faith, and with a hopeful trust, I leap toward your infinite love. I love you, Lord. I have come to spend this time with you just because I want to be with you. Our Petition for the Next Three Challenges Lord, help me to live with purity of intention. Our first challenge is entitled, Seeking Human Praise. Jesus said, I do not accept human praise. Why? His Father deserves all the credit for anything that exists because, after all, he created everything. Knowing and accepting this is indeed a quick path to holiness. Jesus is God, but He leaves us a splendid example of how man should search for God's glory and not his own. When we look for our own fan club, we are really stripping God of the glory that He alone deserves. When we seek praise from men, and work hard to be accepted by them, we are standing before a guillotine that severs a head from its body. However, by purifying our intentions and glorifying God alone through all our actions and thoughts, eternal life is merited for us and for many souls. Our second challenge, the proper motives for our deeds. Self-seeking doesn't work. True selfless love does. There are some advantages to living a life that seeks only God's glory. The benefit achieved is order. We learn to maintain the proper hierarchy in our values and to keep things in their place. When parents need to punish a wayward child, their question is, are we punishing him because he has done something wrong and needs to be taught a lesson? Or do they allow their anger to get the best of them and the punishment then becomes a release valve for their fury? Likewise, in our use of the material goods we have at our disposal, do we use them out of pure love of God or only for our comfort? Our third challenge, entitled True Peace of Heart. When children do something wrong, they usually act nervously when their wrongdoing is uncovered. However, when we are mistakenly blamed, they show a convincing innocence and the accuser reacts in time to avoid harm. The same could be said about purity of intention. If a soul labors only for God's glory, then a certain guarantee of fulfillment necessarily accompanies his destiny. No matter how many obstacles and misunderstandings might besiege him, the soul who follows God's will enjoys peace. Our Conversation with Christ Lord Jesus, you teach me in the gospel to add a supernatural dimension to all my enterprises and efforts. This mortal existence on earth is a mere drop in the ocean compared to eternity that will quickly engulf me. Help me to do all for your greater glory. Our Resolution In my conversations today, I will not brag about myself. I will try to focus the conversation 
on the interests of others. Our Meditation Do you know the joy of the Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and a life freely submitted to the wisdom and knowledge of God's Word? Jesus' opponents refused to accept His authority to speak and act in the name of God, and they refused to believe that He was sent from the Father in heaven. They demanded evidence for His claim to be equal with God. Jesus answers their charges with the supporting evidence of witnesses. The Law of Moses had laid down the principle that the unsupported evidence of one person shall not prevail against a man for any crime or wrong in connection with any offense he committed. Deuteronomy 17.6 At least two or three witnesses were needed. Witnesses to Jesus' True Identity Jesus begins his defense by citing John the Baptist as a witness. Since John publicly pointed to Jesus as the Messiah and had repeatedly borne witness to him, John 1, 19, 20, 26, 29, 35, 36, Jesus also asserts that a greater witness to His identity and equality with God the Father are the signs and miracles He performed. He cites His works not to point to Himself, but to point to the power of God the Father working in and through Him. He cites God the Father as His supreme witness. Jesus asserts that the scriptures themselves, including the first five books of Moses, point to him as the Messiah, the promised Savior. The problem with the scribes and Pharisees was that they did not believe what Moses had written. They desired the praise of their own people, and since they were so focused on themselves, they became blindsided to God. They were so preoccupied with their own position as authorities and interpreters of the law that they became hardened and unable to understand the Word of God. Their pride made them deaf to God's voice. God reveals Himself to the lowly of heart. Scripture tells us that God reveals Himself to the lowly, to those who trust not in themselves, but in God alone. The lowly of heart listen to God's Word with an eagerness to learn and to obey. The Lord Jesus reveals to us the very mind and heart of God. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, He opens our ears so that we may hear His voice and He reveals our hearts and minds with the love and knowledge of God. Do you believe that God's Word has power to set you free from sin and ignorance and to transform you to be like Him? Saint Augustine of Hippo, who lived from 430 to 543 A.D., wrote, quote, as Christians, our task is to make daily progress toward God. Our pilgrimage on earth is a school in which God is the only teacher, and it demands good students, not ones who play truant. In this school, we learn something every day. We learn something from commandments, something from examples, and something from sacraments. These things are remedies for our wounds and materials for study." Unquote. Are you an eager student of God's Word, and do you listen to it with faith and obedience? 
Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I may listen to your word attentively and obey it joyfully. Amen. <coughs> Further Reflection Entitled Men and Women of God's Word Quote, Search the Scriptures Unquote. John 5.39 the scriptures testify on Jesus' behalf, John 5.39. If we believed Moses, that is, the first five books of the Bible, we would believe Jesus, John 5.46. If we don't believe the Bible, how can we believe what Jesus said, John 5.47. If we don't believe Moses and the prophets, that is, two major parts of the Bible, we will not be convinced of our need to repent, even if one should rise from the dead. Luke 16.31 St. Jerome's words are true. Ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. Catechism 133 On the afternoon of the day on which Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus walked about seven miles with two disciples and, beginning then, with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them every passage of scripture which referred to him. Luke 24, 27 That first resurrection evening, Jesus opened their minds to the understanding of the scriptures. Luke 24:45 On the day of his resurrection Jesus spent hours teaching the scriptures This was a statement about the extreme importance of the scriptures Therefore search the scriptures John 5:39 Read the scripture daily especially the Bible readings for daily mass Build your life on the foundation of obedience to God's Word. Matthew 7.24 Share God's Word, whether convenient or inconvenient. 2 Timothy 4.2 Be men and women of God's Word. Our Prayer Father, may I devour your word. May it be the joy and happiness of my heart. Jeremiah 15, 16 God's promise to us. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. Exodus 32, 14 Lenten Meditation Bonus is entitled, Works That Testify. This reflection is based on John 5.31 and was written by Sister Maria Frasati Jakubczyk. It was one of those days when I had to reiterate rules like absolutely no projectiles and found myself saying, no, you may not stand on that. And... Please go explain that outfit to the deans. One of my habitual troublemakers suddenly looked through the sophomoric chaos and, in a moment of unusual insight, asked, Sister, how can you be so patient? I didn't feel particularly patient, but my student didn't know that. He could only see my actions, and these, thank God, were calm. I gave what appeared to me the obvious explanation, God's grace. Oh, said my student, I get it. That is kind of cool. High praise from a sophomore boy. In today's gospel, Jesus says, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Jesus shows us who he is through the works that he does directly. But he also shows us who he is 
through the works that His grace enables us to do. My student could see, along with me, that only God can really be patient with sophomores. In a small way, I was a testimony to God's presence. It was a reminder to me that by allowing God to act in us, we bear witness to Him and make His words believable. How does God want to work in you today? Loving and patient Father, I give you all of my actions this day. Work in me and through me to bear witness to your Son Jesus so that I may bring his presence to others. Today's suggested penance. Send a thank you note to someone to whom you owe a debt of gratitude. Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ. If thou give thyself to fervor, thou shalt find great peace, and thou shalt feel thy labor light through the grace of God and for the love of virtue. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.